Right, the vocal's cool, but it doesn't have that that little extra that we really want out of our vocals. <laughs> what is up, everybody? It is your boy Fire. Thank you once again for tuning into another video. Today, I'm gonna be showing you my favorite EQ to really get that crispiness out of your vocals, really get your vocals to shine on top of any beat. So stay tuned. Let's hop straight in. But as always, today's video is sponsored by our wonderful vocal preset web store. If you're in the market for really finding a great solution for your home studio then check the link in the description. We have over a hundred amazing different vocal presets that'll match your voice and sound, fully customizable, not just kind of one channel presets. So definitely check that out in the description box. And if you're looking for automated mastering and distribution, if you wanna get your music on Tidal and Spotify, then check out my $50 off coupon to Land Studio. This is a full-fledged uh, music suite that gives you access to amazing uh, VST plugins. It also gives you access to uploading to streaming services as well as, and my favorite, um, automated mastering. Lander has a online suite where you can just drag and drop your track, get some different previews, and you can get your songs mastered up to industry spec. So if you're into any of those things, definitely check the links in the description box. Let's go. So the plugin we're going to be taking a look at today is the Tube Tech. Now the Tube Tech is based on the original Pull Tech design. Okay, these are back Sandal style EQs, basically meaning they have really nice wide shapes to them. They're also a little bit different than your traditional parametric EQ. And that's really what makes them unique. So I'm gonna play the track real quick and then I'm gonna disable this EQ so you can really hear how much we lose. And then I'm gonna break down my favorite vocal settings as well as um, you know different types of settings that you can use to do different things on your vocals. Let's go. Rockstar shit with jeans Gucci bandana like 17 All black whip pull up on the scene More money green like bean beans All we talk is fashion, money and lean Kinda in bands, I fell in love with Codeine Yeah, I like a star, yeah, she know she cook it clean that boy ran up but that AR got a B Get how you feel I just bought a pint then I cracked the cell Dread up on the porch then I made a bill I don't wanna talk if you ain't talking about a deal <laughs> How you feel? Alrighty so there you go as you can hear right there you know on the tops of every world, we just have this beautiful high end shininess that, in my opinion, you really can't get anywhere else than this pull tech, right? You could pull up standard parametric EQ, boost the top end, but you still don't get that shine. You know what I mean? So I'll kind of walk you through the settings that I have. And then again, um, how to really customize and tailor it to your voice, right? Or this type of EQ to your voice. Now, again, this is a paid for plugin from Softube. This is the version one, which I like. Um, but you can download, there is a free plugin that you can get called the PTX, I'm pretty sure. Just say free Pultec um, VST um, on Google and you should find it. It does have the exact same type of curves. Okay, this is the traditional Pultec, which has um, kind of just like two main bands, which is basically you've got um, low end and high end. Okay, so this is the one I like for vocals. It is also a mid-range style equalizer as well. That's more... I don't know, I could use that on the vocal bus or maybe even on a mixed bus, but I, I really like this for vocals because it's very simple once you understand it, okay? So the settings that I have going on here, um, we've got two different, um, or let's just say we've got four knobs for actual gain adjustments, right? So level adjustments. And as you can see, they're pretty much mirrored for our two different bands that we have. And um, on one end here, we've got a low end shelf. Now we can adjust this low end shelf from 20 dB all the way up to 100 on this type of EQ. Okay, and we have access to two different types of attenuate, I mean, uh, gain adjustment. We can either boost or we can attenuate, which means to reduce. And as you can see in this instance, what I'm doing is I'm actually setting my um, EQ point to 20 Hertz, and then I'm just reducing it by two. Okay, in my opinion, for mixing a lot of the times, I don't tend to use the pull tech style too much, but when I do, it really shines by just keeping those kind of adjustments low and then mixing them in with other plugins. Now, as you can see, I am doing a little bit of Fry's Vocal Enhancer. You can check out this patch of preset in the description as well, if you want it. But, you know, I'm doing a little bit of pre-EQ there, just a tiny bit, and then I'm mixing that together with the uh, Tube Tech. And then that's how I'm building my sound. You know what I mean? I'm just kind of toning that vocal. So as you can see, 20 Hertz dip, 
it's really just doing a shelving cut so it would be something similar to this but because it's back sandal it's going to be doing a really interesting kind of um adjustment you know what i mean so it's getting a lot more than just 20 hertz it's really just kind of getting rid of some of that low end in a way that is unique okay and then on the other end we have our high band now the high band is a little bit different okay because it is kind of divided up but for attenuating meaning reducing we can actually reduce um separately towards um our boost right so we can boost and attenuate at the same time so we can actually use these together so how i'm using it together well first things first i'm trimming away some of that 20,000 hertz we have the adjustability to either um pull down 20,000 hertz uh what is that right there 16 or 10 my bad and then um five and you know obviously for vocals we might not want to go for five that's probably pretty aggressive you could use that on background vocal but in my opinion this um, type of EQ really shines by just trimming away some of that 20,000 hertz and then adding in a little bit of frequency below that, right? So think of it like this, we removing some of that 20,000 hertz and then having a, another point just kind of poke out uh, at, in this instance, 10,000 hertz. And this is something I learned, uh, I can't remember which video I watched, but 10,000 hertz, 8,000 hertz is really that sweet spot. If you really wanna get that high, crispy, almost distorted vocal sound, you can go a bit higher but it just sounds really beautiful at 10,000 hertz. And as you can see, I'm doing about a 2.8, 2.9 um, dB boost. Okay, we also have the flexibility to adjust how that shape looks of the boost. So as you can see, it can either be sharp or broad, meaning really wide. And I want it to be more surgical, so we're keeping it pretty sharp, okay? And what we get is a really nice vocal sound. So I'm just gonna disable this so you can hear. Rockstar shit with jeans Gucci bandana like 17 All black whip pull up on the scene More money green like green beans All we talk is fashion, money and lean Cut in bands, I fell in love with codeine Right, let's just repeat this word right here, right? Cut in bands, I fell in love with codeine Right, turn it off. Right, the vocal's cool, but it doesn't have that that little extra that we really want out of our vocals, especially in hip-hop where you've got these busy beats with heavy 808s and a lot of hi-hat. You want to make sure that that vocal can poke out in a natural sounding way, okay? Now, I did forget to mention that this um, EQ design uh, originally in the hardware does have tubes in it. So it's definitely also gonna add a little bit of that warmness to your vocal. And that's why I tend to kind of cut away some of that low end, just so we don't get a kind of overly warm and, and almost heavy sounding vocal. We want it to sound bright and upfront. And this is the way that you can do it. Now, if you wanna apply this technique to your own vocal sound, again, follow my procedure of always first cutting the bass because that way you can know how much top to add in. That way you're not working backwards, you know, adding in a whole bunch of top and then removing bass, and then you suddenly got a vocal that doesn't sound natural, right? So I wanna start off by just finding a point that works for you. Generally, I'm gonna keep it low down. So like, you know, uh, um, 30 or 20 is always good. 60 at an extreme range, if I really have a, a like a muddy sounding vocal, you can do that, you know, up to you. And then again, the sweet spot's really gonna be between that 8,000 and 10,000. And then maybe 12,000, if you really want a bright sounding vocal, you can do that. And again, just keep, you know what I mean? Your levels not going too crazy. If you're doing four, five attenuation, you're free to do so, but you'll start to hear that the vocal sounds, in my opinion, a little bit unnatural. That's why I can't really use the EQ like this on every single mix. It really needs to be called upon, you know what I mean? It gets summoned into the mix and it just sounds good. So yeah, man, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, as always, definitely make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you have not, and check out all of the links in the description below. Access to a whole bunch of awesome resources. I also do one-on-one uh, -on -one consultations via Google Meet. So if you have a project you want to show me, you want some theory, you know what I mean? It's the right place to be. Okay, it's getting more and more difficult every day to find good information on YouTube, and I'm one of those channels, right? I'm gonna keep pushing. Because, I, you know what I mean? I just like the DMs and everything on Instagram. I'm always good of people progressing in their music career. So, yeah, man. I'll check out the next one. Peace out.